bad shape. That's dangerous. Skipped over. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you get caught out in baseball for that. You know what I mean? If, 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 you, if you pass the runner in front of you, you're caught out. And when there's a G and an F, there's an H. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly <laughs> right. So, we, we've actually got two very, very, very special guests here today. They're both from the American Red Cross. I don't Brianna, was that you who invited them here today? You guys know Brianna, I guess, but this is a great, to, to me this is a great guest because no, I don't think anyone, people hear about the Red Cross all the time, but when you really talk to people who are on the ground with the Red Cross doing what you guys are doing, I just want to say on, on behalf of Behind the Law, thank you guys so much. You're doing a great job. Yeah. He is Bryce Machino. She is Janice Moran. Bryce, you're a volunteer, right? So when something bad happens, they call you or they email you. How do they actually? Re how does the American Red Cross actually reach out to you and say, "Hey, we need you here"? Well, actually, depending on the level of the response that we have, it depends on how many staff members are, are needed for that response. So, uh, I will usually uh, get a phone call or an email that says, "Hey, are you available?" And they'll give a kind of a time period. Um, I can't really deploy out of the state just because I don't have a lot of free time. So, on those, I work remotely. So, I'll kind of set up a schedule, of time of day. Uh, usually if it's something in a different time zone it works a little better because I can fit it into my schedule but we'll just set out for the next two weeks what are my times that I'm on call and, and can be of assistance. Janice Moran, apartment fire, right? So we have an apartment fire. How do you guys determine how many people to send? And how do you determine what supplies to send? By the initial report that we receive. So if there's maybe 12 individuals, if, if the fire department says, you know, there's four units and there's 12 individuals, um, then we'll send out anywhere from three to five people for the apartment fires. Um, depends on who's available. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter, for instance, if I'm in communications, but I'm on the scene and they need assistance, well, I'm going to help them out with those. How many hugs have you received? <laughs> I'm serious. Like you, know, you, show up at, number. you show up at these apartment fires. I mean, these people have nowhere to go sometimes. Mm -hmm. They might not have... They, they're new residents of Florida. You know, their families in Michigan, their families in Boston, they have nowhere to go here. But you show up there providing them a place to go. Water, food, how many hugs have you gotten? I can't tell you how many hugs I've received, but I can briefly tell you about the most memorable hug. Please do. There was a, a uh, multi-family fire, an apartment fire, and there were many units um, completely destroyed. And so it had been a long morning, and there was, I'd say he was about two and a half years old, and there was broken glass. And so he reached, he looked at me, our eyes just met, and he just jumped in my arms and would not let go of me for over 20 minutes. Oh, that was the most rewarding, for me, the most rewarding uh -huh. um, part of, of being a Red Crosser. So um, awesome. But that's the most memorable hug. Bryce, the most memorable moment of the uh, American Red Crosser. Top that. Yeah, I can't even top that because yeah. I just remember, my, it was like my first day as a volunteer, actually. I was doing a tabletop at a mall this woman just randomly ran up and hugged me. She's like, I love the American Red Cross. I'm like, well, I found a good place to volunteer. So not, not quite as uh, tear-jerking <laughs> as that one, but I just remembered it. It made me think a lot about where I was working. You're not a governmental agency. We know that. You are a total volunteer agency. But how do you work hand-in-hand -hand with an agency like FEMA? You must work together in some ways. I mean, how do you guys coordinate things? Absolutely, it's all it's all a partnership, and and the American Red Cross would not exist and be able to fulfill the missions that we fulfill without these partnerships. And we have to work together, and we have to um, be very well organized, and that communication has to be there. How is the American Red Cross funded, and how can I help? By the generosity of, of the American people, um, which is absolutely amazing, given all the the tragedies that that we have uh, been able to assist in. Um, to, to help financially, it's, it's how uh, Bryce mentioned before, it's go to our uh, website, redcross.org, or call our 800 number, 1-800-RED-CROSS, or text Red Cross to 90999. What about the wildfires? I mean, we, we deal with hurricanes here all the time. We're talking about hurricane preparedness, but you guys are, are across the country. I mean, this is not a hurricane organization. You're there for wildfires. You're there for apartment fires. You're Everything. there for... Earthquake. You're there, for, so you're there for every single event mm -hmm. that happens across the country. I mean, how do you guys do this? It's an unbelievable organization, I would say. How you guys coordinate it all, I don't know. How, how do you guys really keep it all together? Well, being, being an organization for over 100 years, we've definitely um, 
learned over the years what works and what does not. And um, I think, again, with the, with the partnerships that we have, as well as um, the volunteers, could not be done without the amazing volunteers. There's just absolutely no way. Um, but we just, you know, work together as a team, and, and again, that communication is key. <laughs> I can't just name a few without okay. naming the rest. Right. <laughs> um, and um, but which is amazing. The corporate donors, um, it's part of the general public. Part so of, companies, part of the people. companies, come on, pony up, let's go. Redcross.org. So, let, let's say, for instance, that the hurricane, hurricane Irma is coming through. Right. We, we can talk in retrospect if you want. Hurricane Irma is coming through, and it's coming through at 2 a.m. At what time of day does the American Red Cross start organizing? Organize? Well, is it before the storm? Is oh, it absolutely. after the storm? Okay, so uh, what happens? So hurricane's coming through at 2 a.m. When do you guys start talking? We have a 120 hour timeline that, we, that, that kind of kicks it off. We're definitely prepared and ready because that's what we do all year. That's what we do. The Red Cross, we're prepared. Um, but we start with the 120 hour timeline and work closer and closer in. So you're, you, this is like the emergency management agent. You guys are like, a, this is a full-blown organization, right? And wh when do people actually start meeting? Like, when do you start organizing the volunteers and meeting in one particular place? Well, really, once that 120-hour timeline kicks off, that's uh, coordinated a lot at the national level as far as what kind of logistics need to be moved in. Uh, but each individual component, so if we have sheltering teams, we have feeding teams, disaster assessment, casework, they all have a separate timeline, so maybe a couple of days beforehand, the logistics team on the ground in Florida says, let's start organizing the warehouse, let's start taking our inventories, moving things to where we think they might be needed as the storm is tracking, um, helping even kind of do refreshing training for the volunteers in kind of that three-day time period before the storm. And so when you actually do show up, after the storm, we've already we've already grouped up. We know what we're going to do, right? And the storm comes through. Like, what supplies do you actually bring? Like, how do you, how do you ship all these things in? The general public, we can't even get to the gas station. Mm -hmm. You know, the stores are closed, but you guys have everything prepared and ready to go. What are you bringing into the disaster area? Well, yeah, we we try to have we have chapter offices all throughout Central Florida. Uh, we try to keep that supplies continuously uh, ready throughout the year. Um, we do have that kind of ability with our partnerships with government that we can have uh, supplies really on the ready all across uh, Central Florida and the state. Um, and we do have our, our uh, like our warehouse that supplies all of our IT supplies. We actually have a custom critical service that helps bring that in that, that can do some really amazing logistics things. How many chapters are there of the American Red Cross per county or per state or per, um, you know, per region? It, it varies for our Central Florida region. We, um, we cover 19 counties, so we have five chapters and I believe nine offices within those chapters. So some counties may have multiple offices, but it's still one chapter. And how many volunteers can you, can you hold at one time? Not necessarily per disaster, but it's, it is volunteer driven as well. So how many volunteers can you hold pre-disaster, post-disaster and such? My answer to that is we never have enough volunteers. There's mm -hmm. always a need for volunteers. Because it's like running a company, we need volunteers in every aspect that there is. And, and volunteers, because they don't have, most of them don't have 40 hours a week, 30 hours a week, mm -hmm. so we need to double up, triple up on, on those volunteers for those different um, segments. It's a logistical thing. Yes, it is. It's behind the law on Bud 94.1. We're talking to the American Red Cross. It's Bryce Machino and Janice Moran. We all remember Pulse around here, right? I mean, Pulse was a, a real tragedy for all of Central Florida. We all know where we were when Pulse happened. It's just a matter of whether you were up that late at night or, or up that early, basically. Uh, I remember where I was. Make Dolan, do you remember where you were when you found out about Pulse? Oh, well, I was half asleep. I yeah. It was in the middle of the night. And then they came out and they said, oh, we have a I lot of- the sirens, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, my house is, you know, I'm it's kind of close to downtown. And, you know, they came out and they said, oh, we have, you know, like, 20 people dead or something. Like, wow, this is a national uh, national tragedy. And then you'll never forget where Mayor Dyer came out and said we have 51 yeah. people. It was insane. Dead. Was and we were all like, oh, yeah, oh my gosh, this is uh, for, you know, the worst mass shooting in all, all of our lives, At for sure. Time. 
The one group that I know that showed up, the Orlando Police Department showed up, for sure. The ambulances showed up. The doctors showed up at ORMC. But the American Red Cross showed up right away as well, right? What did you guys do to participate in that event? Our first response was uh, helping the first responders on the scene, actually. So we set up the canteen services, give them uh, meals and snacks and water throughout the day. And then we were asked to uh, help staff the uh, family assistance line that was uh, gearing up that night. So I think that started somewhere around 10 o'clock at night or so. Uh, I took the 5 a.m. shift uh, the next morning and worked the next three days on that call center. About 6,000 calls came in during that time. What kind of calls? I mean, give me, a, give me uh, an idea. So my first call was from Switzerland. Uh, someone wanted to check on their friend from college. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it was a lot of people just trying to find out they hadn't heard from a loved one, maybe someone they hadn't heard from for 10 years and they wanted to find out if they were okay. Uh, so we took a lot of missing person reports. Uh, some of it was families just coming into town wanting to know, when I get to the airport, what do I do? So we set up a, a liaison at the airport to help uh, bring people in. Um, some people just call and say, what can I do to help? They didn't know what to do. They, they couldn't just set up and watch TV. They, they wanted to help somehow. So, but how do you exchange information? So, obviously, the police know some of the people who have passed away, and, and you're sitting in a call center, and people are calling from Switzerland. How do you exchange information at that point? How do you relay information to people calling in? Right, so really, our first op, uh, our first mission was just to capture information, missing person reports, uh, because not everyone had been identified, so we were finding as much information as we could. Uh, we weren't the notifiers, um, so if people were looking for information, we could refer them to the city, had set up a website, and uh, obviously they were notifying next of can, but our first mission was just kind of capturing. So are you privy to some information that the public is not privy to at that time when you get called in, or? No. We, you know as much as we know as the, as the public. Right, yes. It's, it's quite an organization. And anytime that you're such a big organization, it takes such unbelievable care to bring everyone together. I mean, that's the most impressive thing to me is that you guys show up when, when no one, everyone else is going that way. You know, you guys have no traffic going in because everyone's going out, essentially, right? right? And, and that's what's so impressive. And, and, and with the person like Bryce who, who's doing it as a volunteer. I mean, you know, the only thing I can say to you is thanks. And I really feel like it's almost a fifth branch of government this American Red Cross. And we have one more segment ahead. We're talking about the American Red Cross and how they can help you or how they help our fellow citizens when a crisis attacks us. And that's right here on Behind the Law on Butt 94.1. I figured you would give away in the next segment. I'm sorry? I'll do your giveaway in the next segment. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I was like, oh, dang. I, she already forgot. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we don't. We don't. So we can so promote it. I think it should, should be a call to volunteer. Yeah, what, what can we do to help you guys Focus. the most? I think that's the key for us. We want to help you. What can we do to help you in this last 12 minutes? Volunteers. Volunteers? Could a volunteer take the first volunteer? Yeah. <laughs> the first <laughs> volunteer. Right, right, right. Just like uh, Probably not. All right, one more segment. Yeah. I'll try to focus on the volunteers. Said, you guys do a lot of good work, and it's not just... It's incredible just, work. Just, I, mean, just, uh, I think I'd like to ask but national. What's great, so. though, is it's open to anyone and everyone. Yeah. You know, it's not like a little click. And you can volunteer from phone, so IT, and what other kind of right. volunteer do people have over there? So, well, I really don't want to be on a phone. PA, either. public no, affairs. So it's more yeah. of communications. PIO. Okay. <laughs> but not the officer. She's got to be in charge. <laughs> Accounting. Yeah. Accounting. Yeah. Yeah. So I think so people also need to Accounting. know as far as what kind of volunteers do you guys yeah, need. Yeah, I agree. But, other I mean, than just, you know, the basic, oh, I know you guys need mm -hmm. people on the phones, manning the phones, but right. what else do you need? Because there's people out there, they're like, well, I don't really don't know if, you know, I can I think it's a valid point. Like, I, I'm not strong enough so. to give sandbags and things, but maybe there are other right. things I can do to help the American Red Cross, right? right? Yeah. yeah. Mick's strong yeah. enough for sandbags. <laughs> no. but, uh, I volunteer Mick. <laughs> those five, mind, those five pound sandbags, yeah, the five pound. <laughs> no, welcome no. back to the program. It's Justin Clark and Behind the Law on Bud 941. Please watch the TV show Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. Central Park is 27 WRDQ. Watch us on Facebook, 4 p.m. every single weekday at Justin Clark Facebook. Right, Just search for Justin Clark. You'll find it right there. Mm -hmm. And listen to us, of course, every single weekday at 8 p.m. on Bud 941, our favorite 
radio station. We have the great pleasure today of talking to some good friends of ours from the American Red Cross. You know, you hear about the American Red Cross all the time, right? Mm -hmm. They're always there when you need them. But it seems like we're never there for them. Mm -hmm. And how do we help the American Red Cross? They're there for you. They're there for our families when we need them. They're there for our friends when they have a wildfire. They're, they're there for us when we have a hurricane. And not just in Florida. Everywhere, across the nation. They were here when Pulse happened here. And they're there right away. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to me it's police, ambulance, Red Cross, every single time. Mm -hmm. But I think we don't know how to help them. McDonald, you and I have been on this show many times talking about politicians and telling people, like, look, if you want to get involved in politics, it's really easy to reach out and, and talk to your politician. You can get involved in the campaign, right? Well, this is one of those situations where this is an incredible cause, the American Red Cross, and they need our help. And there are many ways to help them, right, Mick? Yes. And I mean, they're. they're and really, we need to. to how are you going to tell us? Yeah, tell us how you can So help. I think we all know we can go to AmericanRedCross.com or whatever what it people is. people do you need right now? We can always give you money. We know that, right? But what can we do to actually help? What can we do to volunteer? Is it, do you just need muscle man to throw, away, uh, throw around sandbags, or are there other ways that can help? Oh, like we said earlier, anything that a company has, we have. So we need accountants, we need people that work in human resources to help manage our volunteers, we need people in public affairs, we need people to work the phones, uh, IT. Uh, there's this whole back end on the logistics side that uh, the public doesn't see. They see the sheltering, they see the mobile feeding, but everything that it took to get that bottle of water to that client at the end of the day, it took an army of people uh, volunteering on the back end. When you talk about uh, what does a donated dollar do, we need accountants every 24 hours that run through the financials to say what did we do over the past day to make sure that we're taking care of the money. Well, I know you guys also brought some goodie bags. And um, you know, if anybody wants to win up for the American Red Cross, but I'm not actually going to make a call for volunteers for the American Red Cross because I'm also going to sign up. Mick's going to sign up. <laughs> Justin's going to sign up. Ed, the Ed, one, the beautiful Brianna's going to sign up. Well, you already signed up. So um, I think we all are going to be signing up for the American Red Cross, the local chapter. But we also know that you also brought a goodie bag as well. Or some things from the American Red Cross. So if you would want, if you want to um, be privy to that, if you can please also put on um, comment on pick me for the American Red Cross gift, you know, we'll be picking out a winner here shortly. So, you know, I'm calling out for also volunteers for the American Red Cross. If you would like to become a volunteer, the information to becoming a volunteer is your local number or the email address or a Red Cross redcross.redcross.org uh, slash Central Florida. There you go. So we'll announce it here shortly, the winner of the goodie bag for the American Red Cross. I always get re really surprised, actually, by the American Red Cross and, and your response rate. You're there seemingly instantaneously, right? And again, it, it's not, we're talking about hurricanes this week. So obviously, we, a hurricane, we know at least three, four, five days ahead of time. But it's really like the apartment fire, and you guys are there almost right away. And how you coordinate that out, I don't know. When it's a hurricane, I get it. You know, we, we stockpiled a lot of things, and, and you can you can bring them in fairly quickly, I guess. You have trucks or whatever it is. But when, it, when it's something small and local, how do you coordinate those efforts to get there so quickly on something that, that's not expected? An amazing logistics team. Yeah, that, that's what it really comes to. That's what our logistics teams does. Uh, every, every day of the week, they continuously prepare stockpile for that. You know how you have a uh, federal emergency management agency and every state has their own thing too? Like when the hurricane's coming through, you see Governor Scott in like a bunker, right? They have all the computers out in a bunker. I don't think the American Red Cross... the Cadillac. There you go. Okay. But they have like a... They literally have a bunker, right? And I don't think the American Red Cross really has this bunker. But you have boots on the ground. I mean, you have volunteers out there on the street helping people with power lines down. How do you really keep your volunteers safe? Well, yeah, that's a good point because we, we don't want to deploy anyone until we do know that it is absolutely safe for them to, to go out and be on the ground. One of our first ways is what we call disaster assessment. And so that's our initial team that will go out and find really the areas that it is safe to travel with our volunteers in. So, And where do you start? I have a question. 
what can I do to prepare myself for a hurricane, a disaster? I mean, I'm a pretty proactive guy, but I'm just not, I don't plan ahead. So I'm a knucklehead. Yes. So what do I do? Yeah, well, one of the things is, you know, you talked earlier about having the, the hurricane kit. It can kind of seem overwhelming to have this giant list of items to get for a hurricane. Um, so one of the things I really recommend if you go to the Red Cross website, you can go through that kit, but you don't have to buy all 100 items at once, right? You can go to the grocery store every week, pick up one more thing, get prepared slowly. And if it's something that you use every day, if it's, you know, you use the flashlight once a week, use uh, the dry goods out of your pantry, if it's just part of your normal life, you use your first aid kit, it's preparedness just becomes a part of your everyday life when you do that. That's for everybody else. Okay. Not for you. <laughs> that's just I'm not. A, I'm gonna be one of these yeah. guys. That's like, oh, there's a hurricane coming tomorrow. Yeah. We can make it easy for you. Just yeah. go to our website and go to the store, mm -hmm. and you can buy everything that you need from the Red Cross yeah. store. They really? just have it shipped to you, and there you go. It's ready. Really? So you deliver? Besides the grocery stores. Really? Well, you are listening to Behind the Law <laughs> with Justin Clark and Allie Mack right here on Bud 941. Let me introduce you to everybody. First of all, to my left is Bryce Machino. He's a volunteer with the American Red Cross. To his left is Janice Moran. And then right on the couch here is my good friend and Orlando radio legend, Mick Dolan. Hi, Mick. How are you? I'm wonderful. And Allie Mack is over there probably posting stuff online because she's the social media expert. Allie Mack is here. Hello, and the, yes, I am. The beautiful Brianna is behind the scenes, making sure we're live on Facebook and everywhere else. You know, just search for Justin Clark. You can watch this show live or any other show. But also, please listen to us tonight at 8 p.m. on Bud 941 and watch the TV show Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. on Central Florida's 27 WRDQ. I think it's a very important conversation today. It Maybe is. I'm wrong. You know, I, I just think everyone believes what I believe, but. I think that of the American Red Cross as the fifth branch of government in a lot of ways because mm -hmm. the military shows up, the police show up, the ambulance shows up, and then the American Red Cross shows up. I mean, this is no BS, and this is not a for-profit institution. The American Red Cross is an absolute volunteer, non-for-profit organization. And when you guys show up, I mean, this can be life-saving measures for people. I mean, th these are people who have nowhere else to go at times. Right? Can you tell me a story, Bryce, of, of when you showed up and thought, I'm just so glad and so happy that I joined this organization? Yeah, it was actually one of my first disaster, disaster action team calls. I showed up to a house, and um, it was a family that really didn't know what to do. And so by the time they finally called the Red Cross, they had been waiting in their yard all day. And this time, it was it was late at night. It was dark. You know, we had to use our, our flashlights. The house was... Uh, completely empty from the inside from, from the fire and you just think you know this this family they had nowhere to go they they didn't know what to do and, until we showed up and were able to give them a place to stay and and start to rebuild their lives uh, you know that was a special moment for me Janice Moran uh, first of all number one do, does the American Red Cross just show up I mean do you just like watch the news and you're like oh wow something bad happened over on uh, Main Street we better show up is that how it works, or does someone actually have to call you? Someone actually has to call. Um, either the fire department, police department, or even the potential client. Um, unfortunately, we cannot just show up. We can't just see it on the news and and just show up. We have to be invited. So whenever you know, I broke my leg in high school basketball, the uh, the ambulance showed up, and I, hey, oh yeah, we're here to take care of you. Next thing I know, I got a, a $1,200 bill. For the ambulance truck, right, Big Dolan? Mm. What kind of bill do you send to the people that you go show up to help? Zero. Absolutely nothing. Wow. What allows you guys to do that? Is this donations? I mean, how do you how do you really function as a as a business, so to speak? It's the generosity of the American people. It's the people that give donations. That's the only way we can do this. How do people donate? Redcross.org, one eight hundred Red Cross, or text Red Cross at nine zero nine nine nine. There you go. Monetary donations, volunteer, it's very, very important. It's not just <coughs> when we are having a catastrophe happen in Florida or in our, in our nation, but I think that we as Americans need to come together and actually volunteer in a place where it's not funded by the government, it's funded by us, the people. So I think it's very, very important to have 
us, not just immediately when an, a catastrophe happens, but I think it's very important for us as a nation, as a people, to come together and to, um, to be a part of these organizations that help us as a community, as citizens. So I, I think it's very, very important for people to become volunteers, not when something happens, but even prior before. So definitely, I'm very, I'm happy that you guys are, are a part of it. We actually have a winner of your um, goodie bag. So it's Dolly Wilk that is the winner of our goodie bag um, today. So Dolly Wilk, if you can contact um, the station, uh, we can get that goodie bag um, to you. And please, you know, take in consideration becoming also a volunteer in the American Red Cross, as we are also going to be part of the Red Cross as well. When you guys talk about the American Red Cross, do you have a sort of nickname or a, a shortened version as an ARC? When you, when you guys talk to each other, do you say, oh, we love the ARC, <laughs> whatever? Yeah, it's either ARC or RC. ARC? We, we have RC. a book of acronyms that uh, we try not to use. Uh, 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 no one's uh, listening, it's fine. <laughs> we say whatever we want here on this show, it's fine. Because the whole, the whole show is like the American Red Cross, but I knew in the back of my head there was something else we could call it. The ARC, how's that? That's good. Well, I mean, I can't thank you guys enough for, for what you guys are doing. McDonald has something to say. Quick question. Okay, how about churches? Are you partner with any religious entities? Absolutely. There, there's, um, locally, there's there's many um, different diverse church affiliations that we partner with. Absolutely. Good. And one other question. Uh, let's say that I've got, I'm a company, and I make an item. Say I got a lot of backpacks. I got some extra backpacks. Can I donate those? Um, you guys use those kind of we definitely put you in touch with our fund development okay. department. So that's a definite item, a positive. Thank you. We don't give a lot of, uh, you know, real congratulatory applauses on this show. But if you guys don't mind, I would like to say to Bryce and Janet, for what you guys do, I thank you so much. I mean, from the bottom of my heart, it's, it's, it's really you almost guys are unbelievable what you guys do. And I think it's sometimes understated. And I, and I think for, for those of you listening and watching, uh, the American Red Cross is something, it's one of those things that you just know if you really, really need them, they're going to be there. But without you two and other people like you, you wouldn't be there, you know? So thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for what you guys do, it's, it's really amazing. If you want to get involved with the American Red Cross, how do they reach out? One more time, Bryce. Redcross.org or 1-800-RED-CROSS. And my name is Justin Clark. She is Allie Mack. That is a beautiful Brianna. Mick Dolan. I don't know much. But I do know one little thing. What's that? I'm going to see you right back here tomorrow <laughs> on Bud 19 Yay! That's the highlight of the day! <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> Every year is the show. Right? I have a great time. <laughs> And sometimes he and sometimes he does. And welcome to the program. It's another edition of Behind the Law with Justin Clark and Allie Mack. We have Mick Dolan here. Three two one two eight two one zero five five. We're on Bud ninety four one Monday through Friday eight p.m. Watch us live on Facebook at any time. At Justin Clark, just search for Justin Clark and you'll find us there. You watch the show live four p.m. Monday through Friday, and you can watch any uh, past show there as well. Watch the TV show Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. on Central Florida's 27 WRDQ. More information about the law firms at the website www.youhavepower.com. Joining me as always, Allie Mack, how are you? I'm doing great, how are you? Good to see you. Mick Dolan, the, the Orlando radio legend. Mick Present Dolan. and accounted for. So we're doing hurricane preparedness week here today, as you know. I was a, I was annoyed by the name of the week, but I'm okay with it now because we have such great guests, mm -hmm. I would say. But here's one thing. So when I go to look up the hurricanes that are coming through, I go to OrlandoSentinel.com. Where do you go for your news, McDolan, normally? Uh, well, Sentinel, uh, and uh, my news, 13. Okay, fine. But then when you go to these websites, have you noticed that after like five attempts, they'll kick you out? They'll say, oh, you had to join. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that? So, yeah. oh, you have to pay us 99 cents a month? Yes. Have you also noticed that if you delete history, that removes itself? No. Yeah. So I'm so annoyed with this because you, at, at TV stations, uh, newspapers, everything, you say, look, you can only go to me five times and you got to pay. Do you pay for a lander Uh Yes. Be honest. No, I do. I no, do. you do not. 99 cents. Allie Mack. Allie Mack, do you pay to go to OrlandoCentinel.com? 
Be I don't because I get my news on social media. Well, here's what I have learned. It's free. If you just delete <laughs> history, Nick Dill, mm -hmm. you can absolutely go on there for free. Because it, it loses track of how many times you've been there. Really? I promise you this so is how it works. So just your, your computer history or just the no, history you, of yeah, the No, yeah, you, you go to like your, your computer history and hit delete history, right. and it deletes it. So now it doesn't know you've been there five times. Yeah, 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 but I do that every day. And then the next well, day. no, then, then you're doing something wrong because yeah. well, here's what makes me mad. <laughs> I, I think that if you're, listen, Orlando <laughs> Signal, traditional, traditional media, if you're listening to me right now, here's what I feel. Why wouldn't you want more people to come to your site and sell more advertising dollars because more people are coming to your site as opposed to making them pay 99 cents a month? Think about it business-wise. Sure. Man. sure. You're, an, you're, you're a radio guy for 30, 40 years. But not right? a businessman. Okay, but my feeling on this is, if you're, I'm, I'm a bit, uh, University of Tennessee fan, GoVols.com. You go to GoVols.com more than five times, they make you pay. But I'm just, do 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 do. So delete, it works for that too. Delete history? Really? It's like I've never been there. Man, I'm gonna have to try it. So I think I'm gonna try it. I maybe well, I should be. other talking. sites that like Huffington Post and Reuters and all of them. MSN.com. Yeah. I, I think so that it. I, yeah. I really think that if you just delete your history, it's like you you've never been there before. I think I think you should try it for sure. And I would get really mad when these big media sites will go on there and say, "Oh, you have to pay now for." I don't want to give them my credit card information. Do you? Do you really do give them your? Did you really? Okay. For how many sites, Mick Dolan, have you given your credit card information for? One. Only Orlando Signal. Well, yeah, just that media site. And that wasn't a reputable site, right? <laughs> yes, it was. Now, what are you saying? I don't know. But I, I've talked about this before, and I think it's, it's somewhat Don't ridiculous. X, X, X. No, I, I think it's somewhat ridiculous that they try to charge us to go on their websites. I really do. I agree. Can't you would have more people come to your site if you don't charge them and sell more average? It's it's almost Especially like for the, public information as well. Right. It's like the old subway conversation, right? So you charge them so many dollars to get on the subway in New York or Boston or wherever. Or you can sell more advertising dollars on the subway cars and charge them less to, to ride the train. Maybe Sunrail yeah. should try that. Yeah, exactly. Sunrail should try that. Mm -hmm. Everyone is sick, by the way, Mick Dillon. Have you noticed that? At every single, So yesterday I was telling you about everyone in my office being sick. I was like, it's the Labor Day hangover. It seems like everyone I've talked to has been sick. Have you guys talked to a lot of sick people or no? Actually, yes. I uh, have, too. I, I, mean, I haven't gotten sick. This is sort of a weird time of year, I feel, to get sick. It's still like, at least here, it's still summertime. Well, you come, in, you come in and out of air conditioning. That's okay. not going to help. Ali Mack, have you heard a lot of sick people, or is this just me? No, I was actually sick yesterday. I wasn't even on the show yesterday. I showed up late. She what? was sick of working. <laughs> oh, she was. Sick of working. I got it. Yeah. But I was here. So, Ali Mack, one thing for you. And now way. everybody else is sick. I know. Here. Unbelievable. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. If you're sick, don't go to work. I read an article today about the uh, entertainment complex around the Magic Stadium, uh, Amway Center. Mm -hmm. uh, just got approved. I know you have a little insight into that. So, Mick Dill, here's what we have around Amway Center now. Have you been down there lately? Yeah. It I'm is like some dirt. Big, it's like dirt roads people. around there at this right, point. Right. I mean, it's just absolutely dirt roads there. And there's so much potential down there. Apparently, as of last night, we were approved for like big bars, bowling alleys, entertainment complexes, apartment buildings. Alley Mac, tell us a little bit about that. You can now tell it's, about no, it. No, well, well, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Please. that. I'm gonna tell you that there's a very large architecture firm that has been approved to um, to design and build a very large complex there. So it did go public today on the news, and there's more to come. I'll actually have the architecture company um, here in the next couple weeks, or maybe in the next month, to let us know a little bit more about what's happening in our downtown area. But it's going to be phenomenal, like you said, um, Justin. There is going to be a hotel complex. There's going to be a um, business complex. There's going to be a lot more happening in our Orlando area. I'm so excited about it. So I'm, I'm actually wanting the architecture company to come in live and share a little bit more about that here in the next couple weeks. Hey, Mick, her husband is part of the architecture company. <laughs> I can say that. Why can't I say that? We have inside I'm information on this Justin, deal. Justin, I'm ready to pounce on it. Right yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, but think about it like this. I mean, a lot of these big cities that you go visit, right? Give me the mic. 
when, when you when you go to these big cities, you go to a big sporting event. There's like so many things to do around them. Right now, the Amway Center is still like desolate. I mean, there's really not there's really not a lot to do around. There's there. a wig store down there. Oh yeah, great. They have been dying for a new wig, you know. This where I Still. Yeah, that's where I got mine. Is this I mean, where you got yours? You, you can walk under the mic. You can walk under the underpass still, you know, and go to Church Street or whatever. But it, when where Amway Center really is, there's not a lot to do. So now we're having one of these cool like bowling alleys with the games and things like that. Finally, finally, let, let's extend downtown that way a little bit. And I think that's what's coming. That's that's what I see. That's my vision. Well, and we'll definitely have. I'm excited about the hundred dollar drinks that we're going to be. Oh, what do you yeah. mean? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I, you know scary. what I mean if you've been to a magic game. Yeah, you know right. I mean. yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> so we're excited about that as well. And we also have now one hurricane rolled through. wasn't a hurricane, tropical storm, I guess. What did you guys read about this tropical storm? It hit Mississippi or something? Do you know anything about it? Yeah, Gordon's gone. Pretty Gordon much. is gone. But another one's on its way. And now we have Florence, Florence. which is very weird because if you, if you know your alphabet, F is before G. Mm -hmm. yeah, Lawrence is still circling around somewhere in the Atlantic. It was looking for a place to go. And it's just still chilling, <laughs> right? But Lawrence could come this way. It's heading for the Bahamas. And, and we decided this week we're going to talk to you about hurricane preparedness a little bit. But not sort of the normal, you need to buy batteries and you need to buy a, a, a alarm clock, that type of thing. We're going to talk about it from a, a little bit of a different angle. Yesterday we talked about uh, construction. You know what you need to do to prepare your house and then what you need to do after a storm comes through to make sure that your insurance claim goes through smoothly tomorrow we're talking about how to get your insurance policies in order before the hurricane comes through but today i think we have some incredibly special guests here and they're both from the american red cross uh bryce machino janice moran welcome to the show by the way thank you for being here yeah, thanks for having us and it's really the first time for me personally, and, and I'll let Mick speak for himself as well, that I've actually talked to anyone who actually works for the Red Cross. We hear about you all the time, right? And we hear about all the good things that you guys really do, but when you really think about boots on the ground, Red Cross, when you think about a family who has been displaced by a fire or a hurricane, and they don't have family around, or they, they don't have money to go rent another place, I mean, this is real, these are real life challenges that we go through, how does the Red Cross really help out in that situation? Well, um, thanks for bringing that up because we're active every single day in the communities. Uh, disasters happen on, on all sizes and scales. So when you talk about like a house fire that happens um, or a hurricane that comes through and a family's displaced, uh, the Red Cross is there to provide that immediate need. So that's gonna be shelter and food, our immediate needs that we take care of, uh, even after a house fire. Uh, and then what we're gonna move into is that recovery process for the client. Uh, and we have clients, the people that we serve and that we work with, and they're really in charge of their recovery plan. We're there to help guide them on their process. Every client's gonna have a unique need and what is back to normal for them is unique. Um, so we're gonna work with them to find out, you know, if you had a house fire, uh, did you have uh, some kind of a medical equipment that was lost, a nebulizer for your child that was lost? Uh, do you need to buy new clothes? Are you trying to find a new place that's near where you work because you don't have a car and you have to rely on public transportation? You know, those are the things that our caseworkers are going to help solve. Uh, and beyond that, you know, we have a long-term recovery that we can work with after a hurricane. Uh, so when people need help filing, say, a, a FEMA grant, you know, Red Cross uh, caseworkers can help with that. Or if you need a, uh, a contact in your community, uh, because we don't do everything. We're not everything to everyone but we have an amazing network of community partners that we can find and problem solve with. Uh, I remember one time even I was at the front desk and I got a call and someone needed a, a prosthetic leg and they called the Red Cross because that's what they knew as someone to get them help. And we don't have that, but we actually have a community partner that could. So it amazes me every day, kind of the problems that we solve for the clients in our community. And let's talk a little bit about what sort of problems the Red Cross really does solve. I mean, because it's not just hurricanes, McDowell, you know what I mean? It, it seems like you guys are there for almost everything. I thought it was always just disaster relief. That's what the Red Cross does. But you're talking everyday stuff. Right. I mean, it's a disaster when your house burns down, sure. Mm -hmm. But disaster meaning lots of people and storms and fires and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. When I joined as a volunteer, that's actually what I thought as well. Is I only saw the Red Cross on the TV as shelters, uh, giving hot food out of the trucks. 
uh, but every day it's working in the community. Um, sometimes you see some very unique situations uh, where no, the clients don't know where else to turn to, so they, they come to the Red Cross. Um, and we also do lines of service outside the disaster, so our service to the armed forces is actually our oldest line of service. It's actually the founding mission of the Red Cross. Uh, so if you have a loved one serving overseas and you have a death in the family, you need to contact them. Uh, the U.S. military actually relies on us to provide that verification, uh, and we can help get that family member home. So that's a different type of disaster that we don't really think about every single day. Let's talk more about the Red Cross and how they help Americans on the other side of this break. It's Justin Clark on Behind the Law, Bud 94.1. Is that my law? Just curious. On time, pretty much. Justin. What? Was it on time, that break? When we were a little just long? a tiny bit late. Yeah, okay. Why, what happened? No, that's good. I just right. wondered. About eight seconds later. I know how what how time sends me to He's a pretty it's not hard break, around. at least. <clears throat> tell it in a, in a rush? No, uh, no, 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 what do you think about this? No, I, I just, you know, So I the American Red Cross is one of the companies and one of the organizations that immediately come into action with anything to do with not just hurricane, but 9-11 right. or any kind of disasters or any kind of um, anything like that that happens within the U.S., which I think is, is phenomenal. And um, in the next segment, I'll talk about my, um, my experience in the Red Cross because you guys are such a professional organization and it's such a needed organization within our country that I was actually humbled to be a part of your organization. And every now that I would be home, I would take this late night shift and <laughs> I would just be like, I would be crying in tears of just how many people wanted to help our nation and the disaster. So I definitely want to spot you. It, it, it's amazing some of the, all the different um, scenarios that we re, that we respond to. About a year, year and a half ago, at the Daytona airport, there was an emergency landing from Air Berlin. So you had all these foreigners on their way to Mexico that had to make emergency landing. Well, um, they called us in. They called the Red Cross in to go and, and help. So we provided food, snacks, comfort. You know anything else that they needed, so it's it's amazing all the different right. scenarios. Because they couldn't enter the country. Because they right. couldn't technically enter. Oh, the country. triple, yeah, very. Good. You know, save so, that story. Save that story. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Uh, let's let's see. let's keep talking. You ready? Hey, welcome back to the program. It's Behind the Law with Justin Clark and Allie Mack on Bud 94.1. We're talking about hurricane preparedness, and we're really talking about what happens after the storm when the American Red Cross comes. You guys have heard about the American Red Cross. We all have, right? But have you ever actually really talked to anyone who, who works there, who are boots on the ground, who knows what really happens? Well, well today's that day. We're talking to Bryce Maschino and Janice Morano of the American Red Cross. And here's the question. So... Nick Dolan has worked at a radio station for his whole life, essentially. So when there's a big storm or a big news event, they'll send him a text message or, or beep him or something like that. He knows to get back to the station, right? You know, we've got to get back there because we have to get the news to the community. But when something happens here, whether it's an air crash or, or a hurricane, how do you guys actually all get together? How, how, do, they, how do they tell you it's time to get the whole base? We've got we to gotta get in action now. How does that happen? That's a great question because uh, about 90% of our workforce are volunteers, so we're people with day jobs. Um, so we have an on-call team 24 hours a day, which is our disaster action team, which would respond to maybe a, a disaster that's happened right now, like a house fire. Um, so they're volunteers that just sign up for a shift. Uh, but let's say we do have a hurricane happening and we've declared a state of emergency. We know there's shelters opening. Uh, that's when we'll start doing call downs to all the volunteers that we know that are active, uh, say in Central Florida, that have the training qualifications to work in shelters. That's a big thing that we do throughout the years to train our volunteers, uh, certify them to work in. Uh, so we'll send out email blasts as well. Go into our, our volunteer connection system, as we call it, make yourself active so we know that you're uh, in the state, you're ready to volunteer, you're ready to sign up for a shift. Uh, many of our volunteers are uh, assigned to separate areas or multiple areas depending on their, their specialties as well. Um, so they might say, I'm active to deploy. I could go to say uh, Tampa because there's some shelters opening and I'm in Orlando, I'm willing to travel. Uh, so there's a big logistics back end behind it to find who's ready, who's willing to work, um, who's got days off of work and, or 
who's retired and has a lot of free time that can give. Um, so there is a huge uh, logistics team behind it that gets everyone up and ready. That's Bryce Machino, by the way. He's a volunteer for the American Red Cross. I mean, you don't get paid to do this. I mean, this, this is sort of your life's mission. This, this is what gives you comfort in life, being able to help people out. Uh, Janice Moran, I, I think that this is actually your job, right? I mean, you work for the American Red Cross. Yes. How, does, how does that happen? How, how do you become an actual employee of the American Red Cross? I, it must be a love that you have. How does that happen? Well, definitely have the passion just as a volunteer. So I was previously a volunteer. Um, and staff positions are very few um, that, that become open. So you just typically go through the regular process of, of, of applying and going through the interview process and hope that you're selected so that you can um, just keep fulfilling your, your passion and your mission. I'm still a little bit confused as to how you guys, for me, for instance, right? I own a law firm. And every time that someone calls us or whatever, we have to keep a CRM, right? And we keep, we keep a list and we keep a database. I mean, when you guys have volunteers, we have to keep a database of these volunteers. When something bad actually happens, you email them, you, you send them a text message. It's back to the old McDonald's when, whenever you, a doctor was on call, you know, someone would go to the hospital with a heart attack. How do you reach out to the doctor to get them to the hospital? It's a similar type of situation. I mean, how do you really get all these volunteers to this state of emergency? Well, definitely, once they become a volunteer, um, they choose what area that, that they would like to work in, whether it's in IT, whether it's in administrative, whether it's in public affairs or sheltering or what have you. Um, and then they 